Hello, my name is Alex Mizell from Mac Stadium, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about your remote control options for connecting to your hosted Mac Mini at Mac Stadium. I'm going to concentrate specifically on security and video performance with these uh, softwares, because I think that that's what most people care most about. The first piece of software that I'm going to talk about is called VNC, and VNC is short for Virtual Network Computing. It's a pretty old piece of software. It was originally developed for Unix systems to connect to each other, but these days Mac, PC, and Linux all have versions of VNC that you can use to connect to any other version of VNC. It has a server side and it has a viewer side. Now, the Mac Stadium Mac Minis have the VNC server enabled by default. There is a VNC server built into OSX and we turn it on for you, and so all you need to connect initially is the IP address of your Mac Mini. I've already entered it here. So I'm just going to hit connect, and the first thing that you'll see is uh, a notice that says this is an unencrypted connection. Now why is that important? This is basically telling you that after you type your initial password, which is encrypted, any subsequent information that you either type or see on the screen is potentially susceptible to uh, interception by a sophisticated hacker using sniffing software. Now that's probably not something that you have to worry about very much in day-to-day -day use, and particularly if you're only connecting across a local area network, there's very little chance of that going on. Uh, however, Mac Stadium is an internet service, and so you will have to go over the internet to get to it, and you probably don't want to use VNC uh, very much if you can avoid it because of this. Uh, but you do need to use it to make the initial connection. After you've established the initial connection, you can install other remote control software servers and then use those. Um, we'll talk about some others in a second here. I'm going to hit continue and I'm going to type my password so that you can see how this works. Now this is a Mac uh, OS X machine that lives in a data center and it doesn't have any monitor, keyboard, or mouse connected to it but we can control it by using uh, this software. Here you can see I've already connected uh, previously and I've got a YouTube video pulled up. So I'm going to hit play on the YouTube video and I'm going to give you an idea of the video performance here. Now you can see that there's some artifacts, there's some uh, visual tearing of the frames. I'm getting perhaps four or five frames per second. It's recognizable as video, but if you were trying to do video game development or something uh, serious with the video or if it was important that people could watch, say, YouTubes uh, on your Mac Mini, then this would probably not be an acceptable solution. I'm going to rewind a little bit here, and I'm going to put it in full screen to demonstrate how that looks. Hit play. That's pretty bad. You can, you can see the entire frame being drawn. I'm getting maybe a frame or two per second. But for anything that was remotely video intensive, that's not going to be acceptable. And you'll also notice that there's no sound supported by any version of VNC. So if that's important to you, then it's just not going to work for you. All right, I'm going to close the VNC viewer now. I'm going to talk a little bit for a second. You may be familiar with tight VNC. Uh, VNC is an open source project, and because of that, a lot of people have taken that source code and developed their own versions with different kinds of features. Uh, tight VNC is another one, and it's okay, but if you had to choose an alternate VNC, I would definitely suggest looking into Ultra VNC. Ultra VNC has got some good uh, video compression built into it that helps the video frame rates be higher. It has an option for encryption. Now that's not going to work by default on the, uh, the OSX VNC server, but you could install another VNC server on the uh, Mac side and enable this compression and so have uh, better security inside VNC as well as slightly improved video performance. I'm going to log in now. You'll see it's pretty much the same process as with real VNC. All right, let's watch the same video and see how it looks now in Ultra VNC. It's hard to tell, but the video is a little bit cleaner. Where before I was getting maybe three, four frames a second, now we're up to maybe five or six. So it's not great. Um, the main advantages of Ultra VNC, in addition to the slightly better video performance, would be this nifty toolbar up the top. And you've even got a little network traffic meter here. Uh, this shows you what computer you're connected to. This is all slightly better. And this is all free too, so not so bad. Now there's a version of real VNC that is not free, that has better encryption built into it, but I'm, all, I'm just going to stick with talking about the free tools for right now. Let's look at this one in full screen. 
Again, you can see that it's a little bit better, but it's unacceptable for things that are demanding for video. If you're just doing word processing, if you're editing uh, code, or doing something that is not very video intensive, this is probably going to be just fine for you, and it has the advantage of simplicity. Um, because it's already set up on the Mac side, and because these uh, programs are so small, free to download, you can be up and running in a matter of minutes if you use a VNC client. But what are your alternatives to the VNC client? <coughs> One that I particularly like is called TeamViewer. TeamViewer is commercial software, and it's free for personal use, but if you want to use it for your business, they encourage you to buy a copy and register it, and they're going to nag you a little bit about it whenever they can. Now, I've already installed the server side on the Mac. Uh, there's really not much to it. It's just a download and install, but whenever you do that, it will give you a nine-digit partner ID that I've got typed in here already. I'm going to click Connect to Partner to show you how it works. It asks for a password, same as VNC. And then we see the same desktop as we did before. TeamViewer has this nifty contact list over here. It's got chat, it's got video chat built into it, it's got audio chat built into it. It does not actually send audio from the computer over to the remote side. Uh, so it has that in common with VNC. The video performance is probably not quite as good. Again, depending on what you're doing, this may be just fine. I'm kind of pushing it to, uh, to show the limits of these software packages, but uh, this is a slightly worse frame rate, I would say, than Ultra VNC. And if I rewind it, go into full screen, that's just unusable, basically. That's terrible. I wouldn't watch that for very long if I had to. But why would you use TeamViewer? Well, in addition to it being a pretty slick piece of software and being newer than VNC, it is encrypted from end to end. And so if security is a major concern for you, then this is probably going to be the one that you want to use. Anything that you type on the keyboard is going to be encrypted. All your mouse cursor movements and any video uh, is all encrypted. And it's perfectly safe to use this across the internet or across any other network. I'm going to close the TeamViewer client. You'll see the NAG screen that I was talking about here. Just click OK. I don't want to register. I'm going to move on now to the last product that I'm going to talk about, and it's also the newest. I've only recently found out about it myself. It's called Splash Top Remote, and it can be a little bit difficult to find. <laughs> if there's a, uh, a, a streamer, what the, is what they call the server, that's easily found on their website. And there's an iPad app for it that I understand works pretty well. But if you want to find the Windows client, you're going to have to look a little bit harder. Now, we're going to put it up on the blog for you on Mac Stadium's blog so that uh, if you are a Mac Stadium customer, you should have no trouble downloading this. By the time that you're watching this video, some time has probably passed, and they may have already released a new version on the Splashtop website. So you may want to go there first. Make sure that you've got the latest version. But the nice thing about Splashtop is that the video performance is darn near incredible. I'm going to go ahead and connect and give you a demo of that. Got the Team Viewer NAG screen up on the Mac side here. I'm going to put this one in full screen. Cool. And uh, let's play some video. You notice right away that the audio works. That's on by default. You don't have to do anything special to make it go. But what you'll also notice is that the video is incredibly smooth. It's almost like you're playing this YouTube video on your local desktop. And I don't know if you've used very many remote control apps, but if you have, you'll know that this is really exceptionally good video performance. You, you could probably play a video game. You might be able to play some World of Warcraft over this if you wanted to. I'm going to rewind it. Put it in full screen. Occasionally I do get that white. There we go. So now we have a high-def video running in full screen across a remote control app, and it's almost as if you're sitting there watching the video. You could totally watch a movie this way, and I don't think it would be too distracting. That, in essence, is why you would want to use Splashtop Remote over the other two uh, remote control packages that I've covered here. So that's it. I'm going to close that client. Uh, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them on the blog. I'm going to sum up here. We've looked at a few different VNC viewers. Uh, that's the software that you're going to have to use to establish the initial connection to your Mac Mini. After you've done that, if you uh, are concerned about security more, I would suggest going with the TeamViewer client. 
And if you are uh, concerned with video performance uh, and also sound, I would choose the Splash Talk remote client. Uh, all of these are pretty good remote control packages and they will all uh, get the job done in a pinch. Um, again, this has been Alex Mizell for Max Stadium and thank you for listening.